Daniel's two iron legs of our study of the Bible. From 312 to 337 AD. In 324, the ancient city of Azidium, B-Y-Z-A-N-T-I-U-M, was made the new capital of the Roman Empire by Emperor Constantine the Great, after whom it renamed and dedicated on 11 May of 330. It was renamed to Constantinople. It divided into two legs of Daniel 3 of the legs of iron. We have the east leg and we have the west leg. The east leg is the Byzantine, Byzantine church center of Constantinople. It is Syria of Antioch. Salvation is grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Baptism is a baptism for believers only immersion. The priests are the believers. And the fall of Constantinople was to the Muslims in 1453 AD. Thousands of manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. It is the highway to the King James 1611 Bible of one, the Syrian text of two, the Antiochian text three, the Byzantine text four, the traditional text and five, the received text we have the West the Latin church, the center is Rome. I think by now you know which is the good and which is the bad. Out of Antioch, I mean, excuse me, out of Alexandria, Egypt, you don't want your Bible or any parts of your Bible. from Alexandria or Egypt. Salvation by works, water baptism, infant sprinkling. It's the priest ruling over the laity. The laity is, you know, you that sit in the pew. Just put your money in the pot and you have no say. They have the pagan mystery religion. They had the Pope. Yeah, heresy. The Baptist churches have adulterated themselves into and away from the Eastern Church. Where the man of God becomes the idol, we got a great preacher. Look how great our preacher is. I heard one person one time. If anybody mocks my preacher, anybody insults my preacher, I'm going to shoot them. Then God is not your God, your preacher is your God. Well, if my preacher left his church, I leave the church. Baptism for salvation or condition for church membership. The Baptist Church are doing it. They do away with the priesthood of all believers. I had one, one preacher one time in the church. If you don't like how I'm doing it, you just leave. And if you want your money back, you go see our treasurer. And he'll give all the money because I'm the say-so in this pulpit. I had another preacher one time, I mean, I was in school, and my wife Lisa and I were talking about going to go start a church. 
and we ask the congregation to pray. Anybody got any prayer requests? Yes, Sally. Uh, I'd like to pray that some of, we would like to start a work in Norwich where we were living. Because churches were pretty lame in Connecticut. Now, remind you, as far as I can remember back, I don't know, I have nightly, except for Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, and sometimes, you know, other things, but I have nightly been teaching my family the Bible, usually chapter by chapter by chapter. Sometimes some chapters take more, but I have been teaching my family nightly the Bible. We sit down, we open up the Bible, I teach them, and then we go through a reading through the Bible, through the year, as a family. And sometimes, you know, we, we don't do on church nights, and sometimes, you know, we end up in a hospital and stuff like that. But this pastor had the nerve to come up to me. I don't authorize your church. I don't authorize what you're doing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just having a family Bible study. But I don't authorize it. He wrote a big doctor in the church and all that, so... Because the main problem was, I did not get his permission. I don't need your permission, buddy. And God has sure used me over the years. I was waiting for him to throw me. Well, you're not ordained. Because many years of his ministry, he was not ordained. And he got a few of his preachers together and then, you know, had the ordain for him. But that's something else. So, salvation by grace and effective by your works. I believe you can be saved and be a dud. I believe that. I believe you can be saved on fire for the Lord and you fizzle out and, and done. I, you can't lose your salvation. I don't know why you would fizzle out. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession man of salvation. salvation. Anything more to speak about, even I <laughs> size people up. I don't always speak. But there are some churches, you know, if you don't do something. Now, let me classify what they mean by doing something. I've been in many, many Baptist churches. You don't mow the lawn. My family have always been in the ministry, and we've been separate. I mean, when we came down to Florida, we had the street, our street ministry. And, you know, we were so separated from the church because you didn't join us. Yeah, we were there. You just obsidized us. Um, they want you to do everything not for Jesus. I, I had a pastor mad at me. He came to the farmer's market. He was mad because I did not represent the church at the time that we were at. I'm not there for your church. Never do I witnessing, never do I tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ or something. Never do I mention a church. Because if you're not saved and you're not going to get saved, don't go to church. Now, if you're saved, you need a church, you get saved. I will find a local church as possible to where you live. I, I pass it. Well, you know, if they get saved, you buy them to our church. I said, well, that's kind of interesting because I talked to a person from Alabama last week. Am I supposed to tell that guy from Alabama if he believes in Jesus? All right, now come all the way down here to Florida to our church. See, most of the promotion is for their church. You know, I understand why they go to Malachi and preach, you know, if you're the blessings of the tithings and the warehouse of God and all everything like that. It's because that pastor does not have faith in God for God to pay his bill. 
and you start sweating. Oh, the, the, the offering plate's getting a little light. I got to get, get, get that tithing message out. I know. People don't like me. Corrupt manuscripts. And the name is the Alexandrian text. English translations. RSV, NIV, K New King James, Good News. If it ain't King James, it ain't the Bible. Now, you're not going to go to hell for having an NIV, but man, you're going to have works of wood, hay, or stubble, and the fire will burn your works, and you will lose rewards for the corrupt Bible. Revivals and God's work ended in America when they brought and adapted the line to Alexandrian text. You know when, when England started to fall as a nation, not only did you know the Belfort Declaration and messing with Israel, when they changed their Bible. Right now, I want to say the RSV, the Revised Standard Text, but I'm not sure if that's the one. I mean, Uh, yeah, the Re Revised Standard Version. I believe that was the one. No, was it the Revised? The American Standard Version in 1881 would downplay them. I forget which Bible it was. That downplayed England, messing with Israel and messing with the Bible. When America came out the S, uh, America Standard Bible and started messing into the Alexandrian Co and into the Western Church, the Church of Alexandria, your revivals are done. I'm sorry if you're in a church and you got other Bibles besides the King James. Stop praying for a revival because God is not going to give you a revival based on the devil's Bibles. You know, but you know, the satanic Bible by uh, Evade, yeah, whatever his name is, I don't care. That's not the only satanic Bible. You know, the other satanic Bibles, NIV, New King James, RSV, ASV, English, Good News, those are satanic Bibles too. And since the church has come into the Alexandrian creed of America, your revival has ended. You know, we did have not had one legitimate, and I ain't talking about worldly carnal revival. I'm talking about one legit hellfire, movie houses closing, people giving up beer, people repenting in the streets, people coming in in great groups to hear a preacher preach, street preaching, all that. We have not had one of them great, biblical, godly, ordained revivals. Never. Never. Under any president going all the way back to George Washington. Oh, you know, we said we had, that wasn't revival. That was a few. I feel so great. Oh, don't you feel so great? Oh, he feels so great. Oh, and well, there was no repentance and no getting right with God. And you're not going to get that kind of revival today. I don't believe in a national or church revival with modern versions of Alexandrian text. Now, let me tell you what I do believe with a revival. I re I believe a man or woman can get right and have revival amongst themselves. And if a man and wife or a wife and a husband get together, I believe there could be a revival amongst a married couple. And if their children get right, and their children, and then you have a family revival. But you're not going to have a church, one church revival. When in that congregation, all are welcome, and there are lost people in that church. You can't have a revival when lost people are in that church, and two, three weeks later, they're still lost. The revivals in America, the revivals that swept through Europe and England, where lost people turned to Jesus. 
the Christians turned back to Jesus. That's the revival. That's not going to happen in the watered down garbage that Satan feeds the modern church today. Take away the King James. And it stopped with the Alexandrian text in the schools, the seminaries, and the pulpits of American churches. Oliver Green and John R. Rice did not believe the King James Bible. John R. Rice would come right out and he had written, I read against the King James. Great men used by God but sent into the Egypt for the word of God. God used John R. Rice. God used Oliver Green. But they went to Egypt, not Antioch. They went to the Satan. They went to the devil. They went to the enemy for the for the word of God. They didn't go to God. They didn't go to Jesus. And they didn't go to the Holy Spirit. Oliver Green was in the Greek. Go all the way back where we started this message. John R. Rice, the best authorities. My Bible, no, not my, my, my school food Bible, I had to get rid of. would have the notes in there, the best manuscripts omit. No, omit your notes. Bob Jones Sr. had instructors in Bob Jones College, University. There were instructors under him in the classrooms that were against the King James. He was a King James Church in, in seminary, but the instructors, Billy Graham, went against the King James. Great men, they were used by God, and they used the devil's Bible. I am set, still. Listen, the first Bible I had was a good news for, for man. I stole it because it had pretty little pictures in it. When I worked for General Dynamics and I was building a nuclear submarine, I had one of them green pocket Gideon's NIV. I read that. And I read it well. I read it when I was on lunch. I read it when I was on break. I read it when I went to the potty. Then I was brought to the King James, and I was shown the difference between the King James. My grandma used the Living Bible. When I showed her that her Living Bible had SOB in it, that's it. She went to the King James. Notice the places where your modern Bible takes the blood out. Notice the places where your modern Bible takes out the deity of Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about. That's the Western Church. Jesus is not God. Jesus doesn't have any blood. You need to be baptized. You need to have works. You need to do everything what the scriptures what the scripture says the Western church violates. Because their Bible doesn't care. They write what they want to write. So let's look at some scripture here. So we're going to look at the West, and we're going to look at the East. So I'm going to bring up my... I thought I had it open. I thought I had opened it. I want you to see this. Now we're going to look at the first and second times that the Western first and the Eastern church shows up. First and second times. That's all we need to do. And I... Well, anyway, that's Genesis. That's Exodus. Genesis chapter 12. The Western church is the Egyptian church. So Genesis 12, 10 to 15. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram, and Abram went down to Egypt. That's the first time the Western church, that's the first time Egypt shows up in the Bible. Let's see what the context is. Went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for there was famine was grievous in the land. 
So the first time there's a famine. And the man of God runs down to Egypt. The book of Ruth. There was a famine. And they run to Moab. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter to Egypt. He said unto Sarai his wife. Behold now. I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. She's beautiful. She's got a beautiful wife. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, they shall say, This is his wife. They will kill me, but they will save thee alive. So the first contact of Egypt is a sexual contact. Hey, they're going to see your beauty, dear. And they're going to force themselves upon you, taking my life. Friend, that happens in America. There are places where the African has killed somebody for another man's wife or girlfriend. Exodus. I don't care you think I'm big, bigoted and prejudiced and all that. I never ask your opinion. Exodus 1, verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to flick them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh, that's the Egyptian ruler, treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted him, the more they grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Egypt. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. So the first time is a sexual contact. The second time, the children of God, Israel, are in bondage and slave labor to the Egyptians, the Africans. And there are a group of people in America, oh, the slavery, oh, the slavery. Hey, let's go back into history when you had God's people, the Jew, the Hebrews, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when you put them in hard, rigor, service. So with the Western Church of Egypt, we see sexual perversions and we see bondage. The Eastern Church, Antioch, Acts, chapter 6. Acts, chapter 6. In those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in their daily ministration. Then, they, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God to serve tables. It's the pastor's job to minister the word of God. It is the deacon's To do the work. You know, I, I hear, Pastor, you had to go to the post office. You had to go pay the water bill. You had to go fight this. You had to go over there. He had to do that. That's not his job. Deacon. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. <laughs> I've been in churches. They were not of an honest report. Full of the Holy Ghost. One of them, in a pulpit for Sunday school, was teaching heresy. And wisdom, whom you may appoint over the, this business. But we will give ourselves continually in prayer to ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost. Philip. Parchuxius, Nicenor, 
Determined. Parmenius and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. So the first time we see Antioch, we see it's the appointed ministry of the leadership of the Word of God. You didn't see any Word of God in Egyptians of Egypt. Now chapter 11, verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake to the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed, and turned on to the Lord. And tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. So here we have people, God's people, preaching and teaching, coming out of the world, coming out of darkness, and it's happening in Antioch. Now watch this one. Okay, this one. Acts 11.26 And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Look, verse 25, And it departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. So, read on. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So here is Paul and Barnabas in a city called Antioch. There's a church, and they're teaching the people. We read early they are preaching, and they are teaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read in Acts chapter 6, they're pointed the ministry of the Word of God. The Eastern Church in the Bible focuses on the Word of God, the Western Church of Egypt focuses on sex and bondage. And I did not mean it like that. So, I want to look up another thing here. Alexandria. Alexandria. So, that's what we have. I am from the Eastern Church. I am not from the West. I don't want anything to do with the West. If you and your Bible are in the West, I am going to pray that you get right and cross over to the East. You know the biblical definition is West to East. Israel went into the promised land east to west. East to west. Your very means of pleasing God is on the west or east. Are you of Satan of Egypt? Or are you of God through Antioch? The King James Bible is of Antioch. 
all the others, NIV and all of them, are of the West. Egypt. And God forbade his people to go back into Egypt. Egypt is a type of world. And you don't belong there. 